Today we're talking about the future of automation. Automation is the elimination of human input and guidance into a process or task. Again, examples of automation include self-driving cars, electronic personal assistants, iRobots, you know, the vacuums that clean your floor without mm -hmm. a human having to push it. Or what about manufacturing robots? It seems cool and it really is neat and convenient, but have you really thought about what these automated inventions mean for job opportunities, especially in rural communities and in the black community? Joining us again is Dr. Patrick Dix, an automation expert with more than 25 years mm -hmm. of experience in technology. Uh, you have your doctorates in uh, where you focused on this subject, mm -hmm. automation. Your dissertation yep. was on automation in rural communities. Yep. Through your research, you've learned many rural communities are unprepared for automation. Mm -hmm. Why do you say that? Um, due to the education system, and something in my research called a rural brain drain. Basically, if you live in a rural area, there the education system is already minimalistic. So once you leave your high school or graduate wherever you're from, you're going to go to another big city, and that town loses that potential and that skill set. So that is the definition of the rural brain drain. And once those people leave, you have people behind them that say, well. I don't know what to do now. Mm -hmm. You know, say I move from South Carolina to Texas. The best thing I could tell you to do is say, hey, ma um, major in this in college or get a blue collar trade and move out here. But those big cities and big towns, they continually take talent away, talent away. And in rural areas, many people don't have a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. You know, many people think, well, getting a high school diploma or education is a joke. Right now, it is, pa it is paramount to your sustainability and to you having a, at least a chance in life to survive. Yeah, and in many rural communities, there are factory jobs. A lot of plants yep. are in rural communities and that's really where the bulk of a lot of people work mm -hmm. in those small towns. Uh, how could automation impact that industry of plant workers and, and those who are doing a lot of manual labor? Um, it's completely, it would devastate it. It is over for it because just think about if I were to invest $20 million in robots and I look at my payroll of my workers, if I can get rid of a thousand people and have a hundred people run, run that facility, that is about 1,900 people gone. Wow. Yes. So if I have 2,000, yes, I said that correctly, yeah, I would have 1,900 people with un unemployment. And people may see something in the news called um, universal basic income. You've heard Mark Zuckerberg, they can Google this, or uh, Bill Gates talk about it to where they want to tax the robots that are working in the factories, take the tax dollars, and pay people unemployment to sit at home. I think that's highly unlikely. But that's another thing. It's called UBI, Universal Basic Income. Is there, and we talked about this in the last segment, transferable skills. Yep. Does that apply to the factory workers as well? Well, many companies hire factory workers because it's easy to train them and it's cheap to train them. So basically, somebody from one factory would have to relearn a new skill set. And many factories do not want to pay for education to train somebody on how to take something from up and down to side to side. Many people in factories, if you don't know this, have to take a test just to get into there just to see if they have the basic arithmetic skills. Can they read, can they comprehend, can they follow a actual um, process or procedure? Mm -hmm. So many of those people, they will say, well, I topped out at making $35 an hour. The thing about a manufacturing job, you're not gonna go to another manufacturing job making that kind of money. That's where the loophole comes in. Somebody that has like a blue collar or white collar skill, say you're a plumber, you could charge $80 an hour you might be can move to another city and say, now nah, I could charge 120 due to the affluency of the area. What is going to be the domino effect of uh, automation in rural communities? It is completely going to wipe it out. And if uh, with the high cost of living, if it doesn't already eliminate with um, companies trying to find cheap labor, it, it both on both aspects is going to eliminate them. Um, over time, I mean, companies can try to, in South Carolina, to encourage companies to come here for tax breaks. Mm -hmm. But when you're paying people $12 an hour, you know, that's only going to go so far. And they'll say, well, instead of paying people $12 an hour, let's take a million dollars, write it off, and see if we can automate a lot of this stuff. Dr. Dix, how did you get to the point where you got interested in this enough to uh, 
you know, write your dissertation on it, do all this extensive research. Mm -hmm. What was the aha moment for you that, hey, I need to jump on this and alert people that this is a thing and you need to be prepared for it? Um, well, when I started to Robert Morris in Pittsburgh, I remember in about March 2017, I picked up a book about robotics. And I've always been around computers, mm -hmm. but I saw like, okay, we're, we're about to have a problem. I started researching it. One of the key things, you know, you come up with your topic when you write a dissertation, yeah. I already knew what I wanted to write about. So I was gonna do the Southeast, but you know, when you're writing the advisors, you funnel it down. And after research, researching things, I said, South Carolina is where I'm from and where I live at, and it's a big manufacturing hub. So with all of the other technology things that I do, and doing the research, I said, I want to focus on this because I have family members and I have friends that actually work in manufacturing facilities. In your research, you also discovered that uh, women and minorities will mm -hmm. be impacted by the future of automation. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. Well, with women, they will be highly impacted due to a lot of women work a lot of administrative tasks. And in the pandemic, over 800,000 women left the workforce. And we have to be honest, many of those women are not coming back to work. And with the minorities, the lack of education and credentials. If I think you grew up in what Manning, so I grew, yes. I grew up in Williston. So going to school, furthering yourself was seen as it makes you ostracized from people. And what people don't realize, as the world moves forward, you have to have a skill set. There's an old saying, either adapt or die. Right now, we're at halftime in life, you know, like in a football game. So it's either we're going to win or we're going to lose. Mm -hmm. And with the rural communities and with those two groups of people, the, the good thing is both groups of people still have time to get this together. But unless both, to, unless both of those groups try to fix the issue, women will be affected because the administrative tasks, they have processes, they have, like you were talking about, the help assistant. Yeah. Um, many of the financial things can be done automatically. Think about a bank. A bank used to have a lot of women working in it. If I wanted to go buy a Porsche, I think it's McDaniels over here, I would never have to go to the dealership. They will bring it to my house. Mm. So, wow. yeah, they, you taking somebody out of the process already, they'll bring it to my house with a bow and on a, on, on a rollback. Turning now to the black community, why yeah. the black community out of any other community uh, should be concerned as well about the future of automation? Um, lack of education. Um, not wanting to further their education and be better. Thinking, knowing and being competent of how things work thinks it makes them weird. That's why the black community is going to be devastated more than any other community. As and I guess the resources that are available yeah. to black communities, yeah. not all the same resources about STEM and technology yeah. are available uh, to uh, the black community like they are to other communities when you break down the school district funding mm -hmm. and different things like that. So when you think about all of that, uh, you're saying that education is the number one thing you yes. have to make sure you have. Yes. Because uh, our community is lacking in some areas mm -hmm. when it comes to resources. Yes, we are lacking. And one of the big things about the black community, when you have people like myself that have done the research and are reaching out to you, please don't turn a blind eye saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. A trust factor. Maybe. Yes, I have proven research. That's one of the biggest things I tell folks. When people have proven research and statistics, you have to believe what they're talking about. And people in the black community has to be open more to accepting some criticism about, hey, we're lacking here. Let's find out a better way to become better. Let's allocate more resources to this. And I think transparency is a part of that as yes. well, knowing how you, people arrive to mm -hmm. the point that, uh, that you're making right now. So can you pause and just kind of walk us through, I know that you've been doing this for years, mm -hmm. but the research process so people can understand exactly how you got to what you're talking about. Um, the research, how I got to it, as I was saying earlier, I wanted to do the Southeast, yeah. but I funneled it down, talked with my advisor, and I said, I want to work on South Carolina because there's 46 counties in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. There are manufacturing places. I live in Williston still. They used to have Dixie Narco, Daco is closed. So in the Blackville, where my dad had to shop at and where we know a lot of people, they had Duquesne gas grills. I said, all of these people in these areas have one consistent thing. Many of these people only have a high school diploma. And w upon doing the research and doing data and um, talking to people, I said, this is what I really want to do. So once I came down to South Carolina, I said, you know what? I want to see what rural counties in South Carolina, because not every county in South Carolina is rural. Right. But when I looked at the, um, the population of many of these counties, they're very poor. 
you know, Allendale County in the state of South Carolina is the poorest county. It's between Allendale and Marion County. Mm -hmm. Those are the two poorest counties. I think it's a toss up between the other. So if you drive through Allendale County, it looks like another, th it looks like a third world country sometimes, which is sad because some of their leadership they have, you know, they need to do a better job. But when you look at counties like that, I say, wow, you know, this is going to devastate. These people are already, as we say, living on a prayer, living on fumes. Mm -hmm. When they completely automate things, what are these people going to do? Because with the world, how it's changing right now, everybody has to learn to adapt. Yeah. And, you know, the overall response is some people are like, ah, it can't happen. It's here. I don't know what to do. You don't know what you're talking about. But it's just bringing awareness to people. So it's either going to be STEM or you're going to be blue collar. Well, Dr. Dix, thank you so much for joining us on Awareness. Before we go, tell people how they can stay connected with you. And if they have a question after watching this very uh, mm -hmm. informational interview, okay. how can they reach you? Um, I have an Instagram page. It's called King of Automation. Um, All right, Dr. Dix, thank you so much for coming on Awareness.